So hello, my name is George. I'm with Starforce, and today we're going to discuss how to set up your Outlook configurations using Salesforce for Outlook so that the configuration is set up properly for your users in Salesforce. So as an administrator, you're going to want to go to Setup, and then in Setup, under Administration Setup, we're going to want to go to Desktop Administration, and then under that, Outlook Configurations. We're going to go ahead and create a new Outlook configuration, and when we do, we're going to have to name it. So we'll just call this Test2, and you do need to make it active. You can put in a description of, say, what you are synchronizing. Um, some people would like to synchronize only their events. Some would like to synchronize contacts and emails, but not tasks. So this is a good place for that. Notifying product updates allows your end users to know when an update is available. Then you'll pick your users, so we'll just pick a couple of users here and use our shift button to pick a few, put them in, and we can make, we can overwrite any configuration changes made by users. We're not going to do that because they don't have any at this time. We are going to allow them to add emails, and then we'll come to this later in another video on how the user will add the videos. Do we want to sync contacts? Yes, we do. We will sync contacts to Outlook from Salesforce, or we can sync both ways. In both ways, if they create the contact in Outlook, it'll be created in Salesforce. Otherwise, Salesforce is the system of record to synchronize straight to Outlook. Any changes in Outlook will not come back to Salesforce. We'll go ahead and sync both ways. And what do we want to happen with conflicts? Do we want Salesforce to win or Outlook to win? Basically, if a record is changed in both Salesforce and Outlook, who's going to win? We generally want Salesforce to be the system of record. And then if Outlook does find multiple matches, what do we want to sync? The one with the most activity, the recent activity, uh, last updated, or as the oldest creation date. Usually it's the most recent activity is the one you're going to want. Then with events, do you want to sync your calendar events from Outlook to Salesforce? You have a couple of ways to go. You can sync both ways or one way or the other. Uh, let's go ahead and sync from Outlook to Salesforce. And then you can edit field mappings. Generally, you don't need to do this because the standard fields are already mapped. This is only if you have custom fields in Outlook. And conflict behavior, since we're going Outlook to Salesforce, Outlook's going to always win. Do we want to allow our users to modify whether it's synced or what direction it's synced in? So we can make these choices here, and then they can do their own. Um, generally, as an administrator, if you turn off all of these settings, then you control all of the choices here. And that limits your users. They don't have any choices. Tasks, do we want to sync tasks? Yes, we'll go ahead and sync the same thing, Outlook to Salesforce, when you're creating a task. Normally, people create tasks in Salesforce as well, so you'd want to go both ways here. And as system of record, you want Salesforce to win. You don't need to worry about advanced settings unless you're going to be doing timeouts or maximum file sizes or maximum retries. So there's really nothing here you, you would need to mess with on a on a general user basis. Please remember you can always get help from these advanced settings links here or data settings help over here. So once we've saved this, we are only partially done. We have the user set up, but now we have to create our data sets. So with our data sets, do we want the, the people that are syncing, do we want them to only have their records or all contacts. And please remember, you can only have a maximum size of 5,000 records. So we are going to select contacts for the users and the user's team. Uh, this is any sales team they belong to and any records that the user owns. And I want to see also any contacts that on the opportunities in the contact roles and any of those team members and any sales team members, and on accounts on mine and my teams, because my team may own accounts as well. And then you can also filter by criteria. So maybe you want contacts that have an email, 
contains an at sign. This way, you're only getting contacts that you can actually email. And then you can also sync all contacts that users are following in Chatter. And event filters, these are usually pretty good. Uh, last 30 days for events, last 30 days for tasks. So that way you're not getting a major overflow of them. And then at the bottom, you can actually check to see how many records are going to be included for that user. So if we go in and we check the users and we go look at, uh, I believe it was, um, well, now I forgot a user that was in here, but let's go look for ALL, and let's see what shows up here. There's Greg, and get a record count. Let's see what shows up in here. So Greg owns six contacts and does not have any events and tasks. So please remember, you can only synchronize 5,000 records. Once we've saved this, now these users that are in here, Al, Alan, Barry, and Billy, are now able to put the connect for our Salesforce for Outlook in their actual Outlook. And we'll cover that under our next video. Thank you and have a great day.